So just a reminder, one of the first things you're going to do when you work on a vehicle is you're going to disconnect the negative battery cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain the fuel tanks and remove them from the vehicle. But first, we removed the negative cable. So this vehicle has two fuel tanks. So we've got to drain the one in the back as well as the one in the front. Not my favorite job. And so depending on the setup, we either siphon them or uh, drain it out the bottom. Just depends on the, the hoses and the accessibility. And so um, we'll take a look here what the situation is. I've got a pretty good siphon setup. Just squeeze the bottle, you know, the bulb, and it uh, siphons pretty good. The other thing to notice is that one of the first things we do is we put them up on ramps. And so we have the ramps turned in like that so we don't trip over them while we're working on the vehicle. And it raises it up enough. It's up quite high on this one. But we don't have to bend over. Lifting this tank out and everything. I'm standing right here. Don't have to bend over at all. I can sit on my little work um, stool thing for working on the back. Getting into the engine bay. Nothing, nothing like bending down on your knees or, or bending over. Don't have to do that. So it's going to be um, the easy way to go. And the older you get, the more you want to go with, uh, you know, without beating yourself up. <laughs> so anyway, we like to use the ramps. They're easy to move around. We don't have to have, like in the warehouse here, if I had a, a lift, it would be in the way because we're dealing with vehicles of all different sizes and different spots uh, as room allows. So, to the tanks. So this is what we're left with once the uh, fuel tanks are removed. It's the front tank removed. We will have a battery box that will fit down in that recession and in the back so you can see we got a little bit of cleaning to do a lot of oily film on that back shelf this was built up that's not stock that was done to accommodate the air cleaner so if you look, this was the stock height right here. Came all the way across, so that shelf was flat. And it, uh, it was cut out and raised for clearance for the air cleaner. So anyway, we're not changing any of that. <laughs> That will stay the same. That doesn't affect us. But it's just interesting. There's a lot of holes in this vehicle. I mean, there's holes for their, um, you know, the, you can see the, the nuts and bolts for the cooler. But there's an extra set. So I don't know if they just measured wrong or what's going on. But the same thing with where the tank was mounted there's only two two bolts but there's four holes both sides so i don't know i don't know what those two are for but yeah holes galore Kind of reminds me of a VW bus we saw recently. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 
We'll remove the cooler. We're just not going to do it right away. Uh, get the engine out, and uh, then we're getting some of the peripheral stuff out of the engine bay. We'll take care of that also. So that's what's next. We want to uh, pull off this bumper. As I mentioned before, it's in the way. Then we'll pull off the, uh, the muffler. I think we can leave the exhaust on on this one. And uh, this part of the covering has to come off just like it does in all of them. And the pulley, I think, makes it easier so we can clear this coming out. So, so anyway, we're going to start prepping this, get it ready to, to come out. Notice they don't have the back pan on this. Normally there's a, a back piece that would go on and it comes up and seals off that engine bay from the front. And they didn't. And that's missing on this one. Don't know if they had a reason for that. Or what. But anyway, just noticed that. Oh, uh, forward we go. So even after the engine's removed, we have quite a few things removed in this particular vehicle. Um, we've already removed the oil, I mean, sorry, the fuel filter and the fuel pressure regulator. We have the oil filter removed here um, in lines, and we've got the, uh, the coil and the uh, blow by collector here, the vent, um, the starting motor. So we still have a few things to remove and we'll be finished with the engine bay. The fuel tanks are already removed. Oh, we got the oil cooler to remove still. You can see how dirty everything is. So we'll clean all that. Uh, the um, fuel tank vent line still needs to be removed. It's sitting over there. And then the front end without the fuel tank. So again, we'll clean things up. There was a big hole right here. And they covered it with this piece of metal. That's just a bracket for something. They've got riveted on. Another bracket over here. I think we'll remove the two brackets just because they don't serve any purpose. Not really going to be in our way, but I don't know. I think we'll, I think we'll remove them, but we'll see. Um, and you can just see all the holes that somebody put in this car. So, you know, there's all these places where they've covered holes. I mean, there's tons of holes. 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 <laughs> I don't know. More holes. We try not to drill any holes in our conversions. And when we do, we're very mindful Another one of where we put them because I, I just I don't know I don't like drilling holes in a vehicle it bothers me some more holes you can see the bottom side of the dash here Where that, uh, you can see what size a hole they had. I'm guessing it was maybe for a heater of some sort. 
pretty good sized hole. But you can see additional holes. <laughs> I mean, some of these are original, like these right there. Those are original holes, I believe. But yeah, a lot of added holes. So anyway, lots of wires front and back that uh, don't go anywhere or they're just hanging. So sometimes we just clip the ones that are hanging, but uh, we're just doing a conversion. We don't fix the vehicle's problems. We're not a repair business or a restoration business. But anyway, they have the wiring running down the uh, passenger side of the tunnel. And that's typically where we run our wire. And so we will do the same. And so it will run down the passenger side. Let's see, get a better view of that for you. That's where the battery is. And here's a good spot to put some conduit and run some wiring through there. So that, again, we don't have to drill any holes. Most of these vehicles, by the time we get them, you know, a car that's, you know, because we mainly do classics. And so, um, by the time they're, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 plus years old, they've already got a few holes. <laughs> so we don't have to. So anyway, current status. Like I said, a few more things to remove and then some cleaning because it's just no fun to work on a dirty car. So we'll take care of some of these things. There's there's wiring that won't be used. We'll get it up out of the way. Wire that is used. That hopefully shouldn't be in our way. So anyway. Back to work. Well, everything is removed that needs to be removed. And so, what's left to prepare this for conversion is we got to clean up these spaces that we will be using. And uh, you can see, there's quite a oily mess. Now this isn't even the engine department. <laughs> so anyway, we will take care of that next. Uh, one item that we removed that I don't think I mentioned before because it was out of sight, didn't show up when I was looking through the viewfinder here, and that is the fuel pump. So it was kind of a tough place to get to, but so all of that's been removed and it is ready for conversion. Nice thing is we won't have any more oil. Got a little diatomaceous earth down there from when the lines from the oil um, filter dribbled a little bit. So don't like that on my floor. So time to clean and get rolling. Well, this is a mess. This is the dash. This is the side closest to the driver's door where the fuse block is down in here. And how things haven't shorted out and caused a fire is beyond me. 
it's a mess. It needs some attention. Um, not what we're paid to do. Only reason we open this up is we're going to be putting a switch in here, replacing this switch. And we need access to do that. But we're going to do a few things just to make that a little safer. Here's where a couple of the gauges are going to go. In the middle one, you can see, again, kind of a mess. And we'll do what we need to do. But, you know, some of this stuff is just kind of hard to believe. <laughs> and, and, and VWs from the factory are kind of a, a rat's nest. But after they've been around a while, people have added a lot of things. Um, that's the mess you get. So this was the switch for the rear fuel pump, which we don't need. So, like I said, we're going to be replacing that with a, a different switch for a different purpose.